so we're going to do today, we're going to start off with some basic makeup. And I don't mean basic like Starbucks and Uggs. I mean <laughs> basic as in normal. Hi. You have to lose the glasses for me, okay? Alright, so some basic theater makeup rules. So one of the things, the first thing that we need to, to think about with basic makeup rules is that when you're in the theater, in general, you want to start your base up darker than your regular skin, usually by one depending upon, again, how far you are from the audience. The further you are from the audience, and the more lights you're going to have on, so the bigger the theater, keep your eyes closed, please. The bigger your theater, the more lights you have on, the darker you want to go. Not too terribly dark, you still want to look like <coughs> relatively normal for whatever your regular skin tone is. But you've got to make sure that you go a little darker. Open, look up. Now, this is where designing collaboratively is a big deal. When you're doing anything that involves color, when you're doing anything that involves a lot of light, the lighting designer, the set designer, the costume designer, and the makeup designer all have to work together because we're all working on a visual element of the show. And all these visual elements together make the show actually function. All right? So I'm going to retain this again. And I'm going to treat this as if she is working on a proscenium arch stage. So once again, that 20 to 40 foot away rule. And I'm going to try to give her a little bit more contour than she's got to emphasize and work on upping her ability to express, because that's really what makeup is for. Again, I call it the painted mask because that's what it is, close. And so I'm just going to give her a little bit more oomph on some of the areas that she's already got. And we're not going to do age or anything, we're just going to contour her out a little bit. And right now it looks like way too extreme. That's fine, we're going to work it. Okay. My job as a makeup designer is to make people look convincing from different distances. <clears throat> and to allow them to express themselves Open. Close. Allow them to express the character that they are about to portray. Whether that character be something extreme and kind of crazy pants, or something relatively normal, or an ingenue, etc. So, the biggest thing here when you're contouring is working with the cheekbone. You gotta know that this is, this is where the cheek is. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to add some base tone to that again. But when she's smiling or frowning or any of the basic expressions that we have, just giving that a little bit more shape from 20 feet away is going to give her a lot more expression. So again, it's a matter of blending. And when you're doing just the base for a normal makeup, the blending is average. You want it to be nice and soft and subtle. Because the last thing you need is that somebody looks make, made up. When you're doing street makeup, the best street makeup is the makeup that they don't know you're wearing. If you do it properly, if you really do your makeup well for street makeup, nobody should know you're wearing makeup. Okay. So this looks more like a street makeup blend, right? A little bit, little bit more though, it's a little bit more punchy. It's all about choosing the right colors. It's not about how much you put on. How much feels like it's on your face? Nothing. Okay, 
that's proper. If it looks, if it feels like you've been plastered, uh -uh, bad idea. So you want to go with color over quantity. Does that make sense? Good. So always make sure that you're choosing proper colors. So let's see. We want to get that perfect lip color that we were talking about the other day. And the perfect lip color is blood red and foundation. So when I'm mixing, I either mix in something disposable, like this cup, or I would mix in something that I'd be able to sterilize, like a mirror, like a travel mirror. So we're just going to give her her regular lip color back, which is blood red plus the foundation that I put on her. Open. And I'm just going to follow her actual lips here. I'm not going to do anything extreme. I'm not going to increase the lips. I'm going to follow what she's got. And the reason why we do lip, how, why do we do blood red and foundation again on lip color? Because um, lips are basically just like blood under your skin. Yeah, they're the thinnest skin on your face. So you see the most blood on them. It disturbs me to think about Yeah, it doesn't, it's not pleasant for most people. That's why when you cut your lip, it bleeds so much. <laughs> and it helps to go into the lip a little bit, and if you're Actor has their mouth a little open, it makes life a lot easier. Say like that, don't move. She's like, oh my god, please let me move. It's okay, you look fine. Gotta have you block for open. Block for you. Thank you, done. Okay, and we're blotted. Okay, so that's gonna go with our other stuff. So so far. This is what I would do for a character just to get their face running on stage so that they'd be able to be seen better on a proscenium stage. If I was doing anything if I was doing anything that was extreme I mean stop, sorry. If I was doing anything that was in the black box like we're in right now, um, I'd probably just have the actor do their own regular street makeup. Just very basic foundation so they don't blank out and turn into a ghost. And a little tiny bit of contour or rouge. Which we'll get to rouge in a minute. So now for, uh, you've got great lashes. Okay? And again, with eyelashes, unless you're putting false eyelashes on, don't use mascara. Particularly from a distance. If you're from any distance, mascara looks like you got punched in the face. Because it's just big goopy black. On stage where it's a, a black box, no problem. Okay, you can use a little mascara, that's okay. But if you're gonna do giant eyelashes, do false eyelashes. We're just emphasizing the eyes a little bit. Either black or brown. With a guy, or a male character rather, you generally use a brown eyeliner. For a younger character, you use a brown eyeliner. For an adult character, you use a black eyeliner. I don't do the eyeliner all the way to the end of the eye for the tear duct. I start about three quarters of the way in. And I bring it out in what you guys call wings. So we got a little peak there. Okay, so right now I'm using brown so that she's kind of a younger character. But she's already got a lot of eyelashes, so it makes life a little bit easier on me as a makeup artist. Okay. So let's dry those off a little bit, because this is a cream makeup, so it takes a little bit. Open, look up. And here, I'm not going on the lid. I'm going just under, again, at three quarters of the way. Because I'm trying to do this from a farther out. I'm trying to do it from a proscenium at 20 feet at least. 
So I want to widen her eye a little bit so we see more of her eye. Okay. So now, being a cream makeup, it doesn't dry very quickly. It's smudged onto her eye, onto the top of her eyelid. Oh no, whatever shall I do? Blend it away. Close. Blend away that second line that came in. And now we've got regular makeup for this character. Nothing, spe nothing special, nothing specific. Just really base makeup. All right. Somebody asked me, you know, what was base makeup? This is base makeup for a proscenium stage. Right? Okay. Nothing terribly out of the ordinary. Nothing huge. If I wanted to give her a little blush, I'd go ahead and I'd take that same lip color that I used. And I just, from here, top of the cheekbone down, a little flick, and then blend it in. Again, giving us some youth. Putting it here turns you into a Cupid doll. We don't do Cupid dolls. We just give her a little life. Okay? And that is base tone makeup for the stage. What do you guys think? Look good.